Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday. It is the fifth day in the octave of Christmas. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate of the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Messiah of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light for the revelation or for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child or the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself, a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's interesting, um, Luke chapter 2, where we have, of course, Uh, the birth of Jesus, uh, the visit of the shepherds, the circumcision of Jesus, the the presentation in the temple uh, that we just read. Uh, Really, one chapter in Luke takes him up to about 20, or excuse me, 30 years of age, 29 to 30 years of age, because uh, it begins with his birth and Actually, the, the, at the end of the chapter, you have him in the temple at the age of 12. But then uh, Luke adds this final verse. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. And so that was basically an addressing of Jesus during his growing up years, that he grew in wisdom. In other words, he grew in his uh, his knowledge of of uh, of things around him, as well as knowledge of himself. So he grew in wisdom, and he also grew in, uh, he grew in wisdom and in uh, uh, knowledge and in favor with God and man. And so uh, he grew up, he, he became older. He uh, not only had favor with God, the spiritual side of his life, but also his uh physical side uh, and his social side. So uh, actually it's wisdom and stature. I said wisdom and knowledge. It's wisdom and stature in favor with God and man. So the uh, you have uh, your mind, uh, your uh, stature, your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your physical. All and spiritual, of course, is a part of the emotional uh, in favor with God. So We have this amazing uh, chapter, this panorama, and uh, in the midst of it, we have Jesus' presentation of the temple, a feast that we actually will celebrate on uh, the the 2nd of February. February 2nd is the feast of the presentation because it has to be 40 days uh, after the birth that uh, the uh, mother and child are presented in the temple. Uh, the mother 
uh, gives an, a purification offering, and the child, of course, is dedicated. And it's at this point then that uh, that we are now uh, in that scripture passage in Luke chapter two, and we see that they basically are operating like any other Jewish family. You have a firstborn male. He opens the womb. As they say, that means firstborn, that he needs to be consecrated to the Lord. You need to take him to the temple in Jerusalem. And there, even though his service to God was replaced by the Levitical tribe, he still is dedicated to God for that purpose. And... um, off offering of the uh, the turtle doves or the uh, young pigeons is again uh, a purification offering for the mother. So these things uh, are taking place, but we're reliving it in uh, this octave because we're kind of looking at the whole of Jesus' youth uh, during this week and all that it meant for Jesus to be readied for his place uh, in. Uh, in salvation history, when he began his ministry. And in uh, just a couple of weeks, we'll have his baptism, the baptism of the Lord, which again uh, signifies the onset of his ministry at the age of 30. So today, again, we remember uh, this amazing encounter. And what we see here is uh, uh, the child being dedicated or consecrated to God, the mother's offering being given for her purification, but something else happens. Simeon, who was a man noted for his uh, knowledge, his, his walk in the Spirit, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and given the assurance that he would see the Messiah, happened to be by God's design at the temple at the time that Jesus was presented. And in doing so, he actually picks up Jesus in his arms and begins to begins to prophesy and begins to say, Master, you've let your servant go. And, and so he's prophesying the, the wondrous nature of this child again. Uh, for the Holy Family to see this, it's like the shepherds and the wise men, the, mag- the magi, that we have these that were sent through various means by God, confirming the personhood and the divinity of Jesus. Uh, This is an amazing thing. They don't have to work or worry about making him known. God will take care of all that. But then in turning to Mary, he basically shares with her the sorrows that uh, she will go through. And he doesn't list them all here. In fact, this is the first of seven sorrows that are outlined in the devotion and outlined in Scripture. But uh, he says, you know, a sword is going to pierce your heart. I mean, you have the mother's heart, and you're going to see things happen to your son. You're going to hear things about your son. As he he said, uh, as Simeon said, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and a sign that will be contradicted. He will be a sign, but there's going to be those who contradict it. Say, no, he's not the Messiah and fight aggressively. And of course, that aggressive fighting basically takes Jesus right to the cross where he offers himself for our sins. So a wonderful, wonderful Uh, feast day today as we think about uh, this occasion. Again, it's the octave of Easter. It's not a specific feast day, but we, we are feasting during this octave on all of the wonderful gifts and graces that come from Jesus being in the world. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.